Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Layers TV. My name is RC. And I'm Corey Barker. And we're brought to you by Layers Magazine. That's right, the how to magazine for everything Adobe on newsstands everywhere. Or on LayersMagazine.com. That's right. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited. I am too. We have one of my favorite all time designers, Christy Winter. She's That's right. here. The designer for Layers Magazine is actually going to talk to us about how to be able to use layers in InDesign, right? InDesign, yes, that's layers, right. Layers TV, layers, all right? Never I, don't, mind. I don't get it. All right, but anyway, before we do, I kind of want to jump in and talk a couple of minutes about movies and how they apply to I love movies. Playing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Isn't that great? But <laughs> not those kind of movies. But the movies that I wanted to talk about was how to be able to put movies on the web, specifically ah. like QuickTime and MOV files. Okay. There's a couple of different ways for you to be able to do that. Some of them tax resources on your computer or on your servers, and some of them don't. So kind of talk about that. Now, I'm just going to show you here. I have a folder called Blip TV, and I just called it Blip TV as a reminder that that's where I'm going to go in a little bit. But here I have a movie file, right? And it's 37.6 megs. And all it is is just some regular footage that I had and I just encoded and Right, see, I think, matter of fact, if I do a command zero, I think it's just a tutorial that I'm running through. Right? Oh, yes. Now, what I want to do with that is I want to turn that into something that I can stream online. So the first place that I could go is Flash. Mm -hmm. right? Inside of Flash, I can do a file, import. Actually, let me go ahead before I do anything else. Let me kind of go over here and make a new document. I'll make an ActionScript 3.0 document. I'm not going to worry so much about the settings here, mm -hmm. but I do want to change my canvas to black because, well, that's pretty much what I do. I'm going to click on File, and I'm going to click on Import, and you'll notice that at the very, very bottom you have an option that says Import Video. You click on Import Video, and it's going to walk you through this process step by step by step on how to be able to get video inside of the computer. What I want to do is I want to be able to import off of my computer, and I'm going to browse into the desktop inside of that blip folder and I'm going to take this file called sample. I'm going to click OK and once I do that you're going to see that you have an option to be able to load an external video component. You can embed this into the Swift and play it on the timeline or you can import it as a mobile device. For me what I'm going to do is I'm going to load an external video with a playback component and I'm going to click on next. You're going to notice that automatically it gives you an option to be able to do skins, right? So I'm going to do a skin that says skin under all. Basically, it's pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the skin, the controller directly under this, and it shows everything. A play, a stop, a forward, a back, a scrubber, a volume, a knob. So it gives you all of those information. You have tons of different options that you can use to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can obviously change the color. So I'm going to make that a dark gray. I'm going to click on Next, and that's pretty much it. I click on finish and it takes all of this information and it places all of this information on the stage. What I would prefer to do here would be that I'm going to create uh, I'm going to create an FLA file for this and I'm going to put this into a specific directory on a website. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a separate directory on the website that's going to be called FLV videos, right? And then inside of that directory, I'll put one directory for FLV video 1, another directory for FLV video 2. I like doing it that way because it kind of keeps everything compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. That way, I don't necessarily have to worry about, well, where's that video, where's that video? Everything is in its own structure. Right. So here's the video that I have, right? And, and I can always come back over here to the stage, go to the edit settings on this, and I can match the stage to the contents that are there. And you'll notice that it automatically snaps that. So I'm looking pretty good there. I'm gonna do a file, I'm gonna do a save as, and then inside of the www folder, this is where I would make a new folder, and let's just call it FLV underscore videos. And then inside of there, I'd make a new folder and call it, I don't know, FLV1. Obviously, you would probably give this a more pertinent name, sure. like the name of the tutorial, whatever it is that you would do. Right. Keep in mind, make this lowercase, make this no spaces. Obviously, those kinds of things matter when you're doing stuff on the web. And then I would give this a name. Right, so I would just call this tutorial. Now, I'm saving this here even though the FLA file is not the file that I'm going to necessarily use for this. For this, I would go to File and I'll go to Publish Settings. And under the Publish Settings, I want to make sure that these names are exactly what I want them to be. Like, I don't want this to be tutorial.html. I probably want this to be 
index.html, right? Because whenever a web browser goes onto the web to be able to look at a folder, one of the first files that it looks for is index.html, mm -hmm. then it looks for index.htm, then it looks for default.htm. But for the most part, this will pretty much do it for you. So once I have that set, I click on publish. It takes all of that information and it places all of that information into that directory. Now, I'm going to go in here. There's my FLV videos. There's my FLV1. There's all of the information. Mm -hmm. it looks pretty straightforward, right? If I double click on this, I have my video that shows up there. Now, quit this. And all I would have to do at this point is take this information and publish it online. Mm -hmm. Now, it stands to reason, like I showed you all of this stuff, that's one way for you to be able to do it. I kind of don't like doing it this way. Let me tell you why. We said it was 37 megs, right? Yeah. So every single person who's going to be watching that is going to be chewing up 37 megs of your bandwidth when they're watching all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have one of these like $3.99 a month deals for web space, mm -hmm. that's just bandwidth that you're chewing through, that you're right. chewing through. Mm -hmm. And why would you need to do that when there's tons of different places online for you to be able to do that? So even better would be this. Go online. That sounds a bit of, like a commercial, but I think it just works. So I think it's great. And go to blip.tv. Inside of blip.tv, you can sign up and you can create a free account. You make an account for yourself, right? And then once you make an account, all you have to do is go to your dashboard. And inside of your dashboard, you'll notice I have a whole bunch of videos here that uh, production is going to blur out because I just don't want you to see them. But here we have a whole bunch of stuff, and these are all different videos that you have, that I've uploaded, that mm -hmm. I use on different websites. Right. And all you have to do here is click on Upload. You can give this thing now, right, once you go in here, you can put in a title, you can put in a description, you can search for your file, you can set up specific categories, right? Mm -hmm. You can have all of that stuff set up, you can set up advertising options here, and then upload the video. Now, once you upload that video, you're gonna see that inside of the dashboard, and I personally prefer to upload MOV files to them. They'll convert it into the flash video file that you need. Once you do that, let's just say for example, I have this one here that says the Painter 11 intro screen, hmm. right? I could come over here where it says share, and click on share. And you'll notice here on the right-hand side, there's a share with email. Hey, everybody, this is RC. This oh, is a let me go ahead and uh, Corel Painter 11. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and pause this. Now, once I have that set, I'm going to click here, see the section where it says share. I'm going to switch over, and I'm going to go to embed. Hmm. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed it with a show player. And I'm going to click on go. Once you have that, take a look. It automatically gives you code that you can place mm -hmm. inside of a page inside of Dreamweaver. So what I'll do is I'll just right click and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to swing over to Dreamweaver and inside of Dreamweaver I'm going to create a site. So I'll go to new site. So now that video clip is on the blip server now. Exactly. And so I think that that's the bigger, that's the bigger key there. It's mm -hmm. just their, it's their bandwidth, mm -hmm. right? So you're just hosting it on your site. Right. And more importantly, since you have all of the stuff on one spot like blip, mm -hmm. you can track it. You can track how many people are viewing that's it. That's good, yeah. And I think that that's the part that's the key. So I'm just going to call this blip, right? I'm going to come over here, and on my desktop, I'm going to define this www site off of that blip folder. And click select. And all I'm doing here is just basic site design, right? So this is kind of level one Dreamweaver stuff. I'm going to click done here. And in this one area, what I'll do is I'll come over and I'll create a new page, right? And I'm going to call it blip.htm. I'll open that up. And then using my assets, I'm going to open up my assets here. I'll grab my templates and I'll apply a template to that. So. Let's just say here we have a page, right? And we have that set up. I'm going to come over, and inside of this page, let's just say that we take all of this out of here. And now I'll go over to my code view. And inside of my code view, you'll see that's where I'm just going to hit the enter key so you can see that that's the start of where I want to put this. Right. I'm just going to paste once and switch back over to design. There's the player. Now, the player is really, really big, 1280 by 750. Mm. But you know what? What I'll do is I'll just come over here to this one section, and we'll just change this to, let's say, 400. 
and now I can go ahead and readjust it as I see fit. I can hold on the shift key and kind of keep it proportional. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. I just made some regular adjustments here. I'm just gonna kind of play around with it. Once I have that all set, I can save this and preview this. Let's say we preview this in Firefox. You're gonna get a warning that's gonna say it's trying to go outside on the internet. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, now mm -hmm. you have this player right inside of this page. So the bandwidth is theirs, so the player your own. is theirs, you're not taxing your own. This player you could even customize to be able to make it look exactly the way you would want it for yourself. And you have none of the overhead. Exactly. And if you don't have Flash, it's even better, right? Because you don't have to go through the process of converting and uploading and making a Flash document. So the Flash was definitely a good way for you to be able to do it, but having something like this where you can use Blip to augment your website, mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. And it's free at that. And so, it's free, that's yeah. the most important part. So for more information on that stuff, go to blip.tv and sign up for an account. I love it, very cool stuff. So, well, I think we're gonna be right back. We're gonna take a quick break and be back with our very special guest, Christy Winner, layout designer, and see what kind of cool stuff she's got with InDesign. So. Yeah, stick around. King, and I am on a mission to teach the world to create better graphics. I like teaching you the practical side of both Photoshop and Elements, things that you're going to use day in and day out, mixed in with a little bit of Texas twain. So you'll come on down and join me at KelbyTraining.com. Welcome back, everybody. And I gotta tell you, I'm really excited. So we've got our own little Christy, right? Hey. Hey, Yay. how's it going? Good, good. <laughs> uh, we were talking about layers, right? And we wanted to talk about InDesign and kind of the concept of layers, right? We're, right. we're not necessarily talking layout, but I'm a big fan, if you haven't seen it, I'm always talking about Christy because of all of the work that she does in our magazine. And I figured that a lot of the times, it's always a good idea for us to kind of talk about how you actually use it. And that's one of the things that I dig about what you do. And she wanted to talk about layers, right? Right. What do we want to do? What are we doing with that? Well, I've noticed that a lot of artists don't really use layers in InDesign. And mm. it's something that would help you work a lot faster and smarter. How so, so I'm going to show you how I use my layers. Okay. So here's cool. here's an example of a layout, that layout in that magazine. Okay. And this one doesn't have a background on it yet. Okay. So it's just your text and your pictures. And over here is my layers palette. And I have a template set up for any time I want to do a feature that has all my layers, all my object styles and style sheets already in there. Okay. So here mm. we have the base graphics layer. So that's going to go behind anything. It'll be your, your pattern or your solid color, and that way you can turn it on and off easily. And then I have my folios on a different layer. Now, is that that's a little bit different from taking something and kind of sending forward and going backward, right? Right. Everything goes forward and backward within that layer. So that's probably one of the reasons why I would want to use a layer, because then I can just take all of my graphics and put graphics in one yeah. spot. It's kind of like grouping them together in a way. Okay, well. cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so as soon as I set my page numbers and change the date on the folios, I lock that. So that way they don't get moved out of place. Okay. And then we have graphics with shadows such as these that are already placed. And if they're not on a separate layer, the graphics will sometimes cause a raster effect around the edge and it'll cause the type to be bolded around that picture. Oh. So the workaround for that is to put it on a layer beneath the text. So here it is on a layer of its own beneath the text. So this graphic would actually make this text bold well, yeah, sometimes? Yeah, if, if it's too close to it here or here, it would cause it to bold. And on your wow. printouts, on your PDFs, things like that. I had no so. idea. That's um, one of the little tricks there. Cool. And then I have my text all on a layer. So that way you can, you know, lock all of these layers and select all, and okay. it'll select all of the images in these two pages. And if I wanted to say, say a client wanted to know what it would look like with a different color border, bam, you did it to all of them all at one time. Oh. So that saves, you know, a lot but of time if, if you a... wanted to select all your layers 
all everything on that layer. Otherwise, you'd have to hold shift and select them one at a okay. time and make sure you didn't accidentally click on your text layer. All right, so then it's not just a question of it's not just a question of kind of like that little thing where you're doing bold where it's kind of a trick. If I would have done this and everything was together, I would have made a stroke around every everything. single thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So That's cool. It just helps you move smarter and faster. And also, if I want to get in here and work, work with the text and not move the pictures, I can lock that layer. So it's very helpful. That so makes a little bit I'm more I'm going to go sense. ahead and put in my background layer here on the base graphics. Now you're, gonna, you're not going to put it on the text layer? No, because the text goes on the text layer. So all the text is on here. I'm just gonna show and then I have some headline text that I'm going to turn on later. So first, let's go ahead and paste Command D to place the intro art. Okay. And here we have the intro art. And if you notice, the edge of this is light blue. What that's telling me is it's on this text layer. Oh, so okay. anything on the layer is going to have that color rule around it. And I don't want it on the text layer. I want it on the base graphics. In order to move that, you take this little square here, just drag and drop it. Bam, it's on there. That happens in Illustrator as well. Yeah. That's my contribution yeah, to the tutorial. Yeah, it's a lot like Illustrator. It's a little bit kind of like Illustrator, kind of like Photoshop. I like know. it. I'm digging this. And of course, in here, you have all kinds of options to change your color. You can turn it um, where that layer doesn't print. If you want to save ink, say, and you don't want to print the backgrounds, or there's special little notes you don't want to print. OK, cool. I'm so doing that. I'll go ahead and Command D again. And I did these in chunks so that I wouldn't have a huge Photoshop file. Okay. So this way I have one Photoshop file here and one Photoshop file here instead of one huge file that I have to keep making okay. updates now, and changes Now, for those to. of you who haven't used Illustrator before, what, like, the difference between paste and place? Like, what, what do you mean by, it says place. I know that it didn't say paste. What's um, well, you're placing your graphic. So you're going and you're grabbing it and you're placing it. So it's it not, it's not document. necessarily. It's not paste. Yeah, it's, it's not pasting it, it and putting yeah. a giant file inside of the InDesign. It's almost kind of like a location. Yeah. It's just pointing to a specific file. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to take this one because I want it on behind both of these as well. Okay. So I'll copy it and... As long as you're on this page and have this page active, if you hold um, Shift, Option, Command, V, it pasted in the exact same spot. So that way you don't have to worry about moving it all around and lining everything up. And then I'm going to paste it again, and I'm going to right click, transform, flip horizontal, and put this on the other side. So that way you can see it lines up. I'm going to change my display performance here so you can see it a little bit better. Look at that. And there we go. We have that all lined up there. <laughs> That's cool. So I'm going to hit W to hide my guides. And there's one more thing. I need an eyebrow here. I already created one. An eyebrow is basically I take the intro art or the headline and I make a smaller version of it and put it on the other pages. So that way if you're flipping through, it's easier for the reader to you find. You kind of know what it is yes. that you're looking yeah. at. Okay. So I have one here I made in Photoshop and it has a transparent background. So that way I can put move it wherever I want and make it whatever size I want. And this also saves file size because it's not connected to this file. It's not one huge picture, and I don't have a third file just to have this on top of it. I so that you. way it's small. I can move it wherever I want. Once I have it where I want, Command-0 to zoom all the way out, and I'll lock that layer because the base graphics are pretty much well where I wanted them. So there's some elements missing here, too, which is my headline text. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And the reason that I set the headline text, like anything that doesn't have any design elements that I did in Photoshop, I'll do that in InDesign so that um, we don't have any raster effects or any um, pixelation in the text, especially the okay. small text. So I want to always set my small text in InDesign so you get good crisp prints on your awesome. final product. Just less so. of a chance of messing it up with, right. a, with a graphic. Right. So this is a way to use Photoshop and InDesign and a bunch of different layers to get things to work easy. I love it. Yeah. I, it's absolutely great. I mean, it's any time that we can actually see it, obviously it's really, really cool when we do tips and tricks, but to actually see it in action for something that you can see right on the magazine. I mean, you can see what it looks like when it's all done, right? And yeah. the eyebrow, I was pretty pumped about that because I didn't know what that was called. Yep, eyebrows. So I'm digging it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on the show today. Awesome. So well, let's get uh, back to Corey. 
Kelby Training is really known for great online training and got lots of classes on all sorts of topics, web, photography, design. What many people don't realize is that we have a ton of titles all about video. Teach you how to use Photoshop to make graphics to work with video. Final Cut Pro. Apple Color for doing color grading and image manipulation. Apple Motion for motion graphics. As well as stuff that covers After Effects. So we got things for graphic designers. We've got you covered. These tools should be fun to you. The world of video is great. And if you're brand new to this, it's okay. You could jump in too and learn how the pros do things. My job is to help you have fun and get your job done quicker. Getting the job done fast. My name's Rich Harrington. I've made my background doing all sorts of types of video. So let me help you have fun again by showing you new things that maybe you didn't know how to do and help you have a good time doing it. Okay, we're back. We do want to thank Christy for joining us. That's great stuff. Yeah. Always, and design tips are great, you know. Cause, Seeing what you know, the pros do. Ex exactly, pros do. exactly. She's in there every day doing it, laying these magazines out and really doing the work. So really glad, glad to have her on. So speaking of pros, we have a contest. We do. And we have a prize for that contest. That's right. And it's the big prize. Where Once you again, can go yes. and see all of the pros, right? All we're the pros. One week yeah. away. Pull up the website, Corey. Photoshopworld.com, March 25th through the 27th oh, right. at the Heinz Convention Center in Boston, Massachusetts. It is the place to be able to see all of the pros, right? I think it's like over 40 instructors. I think it's over 100 classes. Corey's teaching a class there. You're teaching what classes are you teaching? I have an illustrator down in Dirty, Photoshop in 3D, the designers for Photoshop, you know, or Photoshop for designers, rather. We're even helping out on a couple, we're helping out on a class. We're helping out on a pre con class. That's right, we are with Matt's HDR, um, so, real world HDR class. We're actually so. going out and shooting and helping people do stuff with HDR photography. Mm -hmm. So that I think is pretty cool. I've got a Dreamweaver, uh, I've got a Dreamweaver and Photoshop integration class. I've That's got right. a Flash, kind of a online photo gallery class. Mm -hmm. I've got the top 10 things that you should know in Photoshop class. I'm pretty excited about that. It's just kind of talking about 10 things that I think everybody should know in Photoshop. Oh, absolutely. So I think that's pretty cool. But it's a week away, right? It's March 25th through the 27th at the Heinz Convention Center. Uh, tons of information that's here. Make sure that you're taking a look at the Photoshop World blog. Make sure that you're looking at, obviously, the class schedule. Let me see that class, class schedule. schedule. Yes, absolutely. It's huge. Actually, Adobe added a bunch of classes. Just this week, actually, yeah. They added a few. Uh, regarding the configurator, John Knack himself, product manager, senior product manager for Photoshop, is going to be doing some classes with configurator, how to set up your own flash panels and your own product, your own right. tools and stuff like that. I'm so. particularly interested. I think I saw Jeff Tranberry is doing some mm -hmm, stuff there, mm -hmm. who's like a scripting genius, yep. um, talking about how to be able to use configurator. And if you haven't seen it, Configurator really is one of those things that I'm excited about because it really does kind of extend Photoshop. And I really think I think it's more powerful than people realize right now. I mean, once it gets out there and gets out there and people are using it more, it's going to really people are going to realize, wow, this is really something else. So, so I was really psyched yeah. to see that they added all of those classes, mm -hmm. and I think that it's one of those things that really does provide value if you're trying to get out and take Photoshop to the next level. Those are the things that you want to check yeah, absolutely, out. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so the class schedule, you want to check that out. You want to go check out the blog, Nancy's kicking it all right on that block so I think mm -hmm. that's awesome but uh, we're gonna give you a way a pass all right not flight not hotel but the pass so you're gonna be able to hang out with us at Photoshop world hey look at that instructor list ah, who are those two guys that's that's <laughs> well that's you got it a little anyway, plug there all right so what do we want to do uh, well, so we have that contest we have to come up with a question that we do right so I'm so. thinking if you watch this, you watch Christy talk about the concept of layers. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you would use layers in InDesign. That's it. it. I mean, she gave a whole bunch of reasons why you would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me one of them. So, mm -hmm. what do they do? Once they, they will get the answer. Go right here to the Layers Magazine website, and as you scroll down, check out RC's blog. All kinds of good info there. <laughs> as you travel That's down, the lamest <laughs> plug. Check out his blog. <laughs> Go all the way to the bottom, and under additional info, click Contact Us, and it's going to take you right to the contact page. Scroll on down into the menu and go to Layers TV Contest. Right there, enter your name, email, and the answer to that question, and how you use layers, of course, in InDesign. How you use it in any way, even if it's an unusual technique, we're curious to hear it. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There you have it. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for Does us. Does wrap it up. So Absolutely. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. It's Corey. And it's RC. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Take care.